So our next question is, how does RNA polymerase actually start transcription? We had identified that there are DNA sequences that are important for transcription, but how does it actually um, recognize these and what is necessary in those sequences? And um, there was a researcher by the name of David Pribnow, and he basically took advantage of the fact that, as we had already talked about, um, there are viruses that infect bacteria called phage. So he took some of this viral DNA that was really, really good at stealing the host machinery, central dogma machinery, or RNA polymerase to start uh, transcription. So that just meant that RNA polymerase um, had high affinity and bound really well to start transcription on one of these segments. So he basically took this DNA sequence and the um, um, E. coli RNA and mix them together. And then he used a technique called DNA digestion. So DNA is the enzyme that cuts DNA, and basically it will cut DNA anywhere that it can see, kind of illustrated here by all these um, all these arrows, but the place where there's protein bound, so in this case RNA polymerase, will be blocked by the DNA digestion, and this region will be protected, and so that the only piece of DNA that will really be left is the part that is underneath the RNA polymerase. So this was a very clever way of finding the sequence that RNA polymerase binds to and pauses at before starting transcription, and he found that it was this TACGATGT that was important. And um, so through this careful mapping, he was then able to compare the sequence to a lot of other um, known uh, sequences that are also um, just upstream of genes. So again, remember upstream means if we have our transcriptional start site around uh, right here, we can see underlined, these are each of the transcriptional start site that was known from the RNA of these um, genes, where um, does the polymerase actually bind? And so this top one is what we had just seen in the last uh, slide that was carefully mapped experimentally by David Pribnow, that T-A-C-G-A-T-G. And he did what was called a sequence alignment, or basically kind of um, measured up these sequences until he could tell that they were all um, uh, aligned pretty well and that there was what's called a consensus sequence. So you can see here there's a lot of T's in the first position in most of them, A's in every single second position, a lot of T's in the third, and then and so on. And um, this sequence is now called the Pribnow box because of the name. It's also known as the negative 10 region that we talked about in lab because it's about 10 base pairs upstream of the transcription start sites. Minus 10. And um, it is really high in A's and T's. And so now I want you to think about why would it be more advantageous looking at the chemical structure of A's and T's versus G's and C's for um, RNA polymerase to bind to a region rich in A's and T's.